Hey guys, welcome back to a new lesson. Today we're going to learn how to recreate movie looks into our footage. We're going to pick two shots, one from Joker and one from June, which are two of my favorite movies ever. The color grading in these movies is insane. And we're going to try to use these techniques and implement them into our everyday footage. You can do this with any of your footage, but just remember the lighting is always very important when we're talking about cinematography. So if this results don't look the same, it's probably because your lighting was a bit off. So try and capture shots with the right light and then try and recreate the movie looks that fits your lighting the best. Before we start editing, let's download Filmora 12. Click the link below, click download, install it, and now you're ready to follow along this tutorial. The first thing you have to know when trying to recreate a movie scene is find out what actual colors were used into the film. For the Joker, for example, they mimic the Kodak 2383 movie look which is one of the most famous film looks in history. So it's actually not that hard to recreate once you know the film name and look they used. And you can find out the properties and the colors for each film look so it'll be easier for you to recreate. To make this easier, you can also jump into the color page and select the comparison view every now and then just to make sure that you're on track with your comparison. As you can see, my shot was shot in S-Log3, which means it's a very flat profile. So we have to turn that into a Rec. 709 footage first. To do that, let's add some contrast with an S-curve, add some more contrast, shadows, highlights, saturation, boom. We have a Rec. 709 footage done. Now, we're gonna start by creating our look onto a Rec. 709 footage. Again, as a reminder, it's not gonna look exactly the same, but just make sure that you match the whites, the blacks, the shadows, the highlights, all of the tones together, and you're gonna have a pretty similar look. Obviously, if we shoot this in the exact same condition, lighting condition, then you're gonna have a very similar result. But if you wanna just try and replicate the look and then use it for like a short film, there's obviously different lighting scenarios, so it's not gonna look the same. It's just gonna be the same look. I usually start with color wheels just to adjust the highlights, midtones, and shadows. And then I also use this little slider next to it, which pretty much increases the range of highlights, midtones, and shadow for the shot. You can play around with this until you're happy. And just remember if something starts to look a bit bad or not too good, just open that comparison view and check what is good and what is not going good and then adjust it. You might have to also adjust the white balance and exposure here and there as you're changing the image throughout the process. Another very important tool to use are the color curves. Not only the normal curves to bring your image back to a Rec. 709, but also the RGB curves. You can play around with this the whole day, but just find a level that you like. Usually I make an S curve, I replicate it throughout all of them three, and then I change a little dot here and there until I get the result that I like. Another very important part of this look is vignette. Vignette is pretty much onto every film look ever and you might not notice it in some scenes but it's always there so always make sure you add a little bit of vignette on the corners but don't overdo it this will make sure that your focus of the audience or whoever is watching it's right in the middle of what you're shooting once you're happy with it let's save it as a preset and we can try this out on different kind of scenes again this is only a base so every time you use this preset you're gonna have to adjust probably like the shadows the highlights and a little bit of tweaks here and there until you're happy with the result because you can't just make a preset that works with everything that just that just doesn't exist so you always have to adjust any lots presets that you make all right let's dive into the second look which is from dune as you can see from this reference image it is a super desaturated skin tones the blue are non-existent and it's just a very dark and moody movie so let's find out how to recreate this effect in Filmora 12. We're going to use the same exact method as before just match the highlights midtones and shadow first curves and then play around with the HSL curves. In this example I actually find it very interesting that I had to play around so much with the whites and the blacks just to match those levels because as you can see Sometimes your shot is going to be not as contrasty as the shot that you're looking at. And the best way to do this is not actually adding contrast or with the curve. It's playing around with the whites and the blacks. This is very, very important to remember because if you just add contrast, it's going to change the whole image. You definitely need a lot of, lot of practice with this because it's not an easy thing to do to replicate movie looks. But if you do this every day, once a day, spend 30 minutes on it, Trust me, you will learn so much more about color and you will become a better colorist like that. 
The best part about this is that you can keep creating presets until you make one that is perfect for your style, for your look, that you actually enjoy. And then you can just make little tweaks here and there, but the more looks you recreate, the more you learn, the better filmmaker editor you become. So definitely give this a shot. Thank you guys for sticking around until here and I'll see you guys in the next video.